Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Bakers, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Bakers worth it every time. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Andrew, and he is an executive coach, he's a business owner, and he's the he's a great guest for the audience, he's going to talk to us all about his work, his business, he's a bull moose catalyst, and um, I'm really happy to welcome him to the show, so Andrew, welcome. Thank you, Chris, happy to be here, thanks for having me, I'm really excited. Yeah, and what I love is... Um, you know, more and more people are finding things that align with their values and there's more options. Um, there's, we live in a very dynamic society. So talk about your story, you know, briefly what you do, how you got there and how you can help the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm an executive coach. Uh, I specialize in leadership wellness. I'm the CEO and founder of Bold Moves Coaching and Consulting. For the past 16 years, though, I worked in construction and a uh, part family-owned business here in Canada. I'm out of Montreal, and we service Canada coast to coast. And I worked my way up from being uh, an administrative assistant through our 24-7 service department geared solely on customer f- uh, customer service, sorry, uh, from coast to coast, and grew myself up to be one of the owner-operators of the business. Uh, so of my 16 years there, I was an owner for about four of them before deciding to exit the company. And although construction was my occupation, people were my passion. I always really enjoyed working with my teams, my direct reports, my clients, my trades. And so I decided to extract the thing that excited me the most and make it my sole focus. And that's where coaching came into play. Um, I did a lot of soul searching, did some counseling, found out that coaching would be a potential good career for me. Went back, got a certification and been working on this for about two years now. Um, And You know, being an executive, being have been a former executive myself, uh, I really felt I had a great um, advantage for being able to coach these individuals, Uh, specifically given my age. You know, I'm 37 years old. I understand the the different generational mindsets. You know, I understand my father's generation, the baby boomers and how they manage their companies. And I also understand the new Gen Zs and where they're coming from in terms of more work-life balance, more flexibility, more working from home privileges. And so I feel like I'm in a unique uh, unique position, Chris, to bring these people together and create a really dynamic and fun work environment where everyone can flourish. Not only though flourish at home, uh, flourish at work, but also flourish at home. And so when I say I specialize in leadership wellness, I specialize in working with executives to or leaders within the company to not only make them more effective and present at work, but make them more effective and present at home with their families, their children, their partners. Um, you know, when you speak to most executives, they say when they're home, they're not mentally home, they're physically home, but not mentally home. And so I'm working with individuals to change that. I want people to recognize that to be fulfilled in life, it's not just about having a successful career. It's it's about much more than that. You know, our our career is only one area of nine of our life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I really love that. Um, cause what you're talking about is, uh, you know, success versus fulfillment and, um, yes. kind of, uh, talk about, um, work-life harmony and what, and what is, how do you define that? And what strategies do you recommend to executives who struggle to balance, um, their ambitions with their personal lives? Absolutely. So, uh, I love the, uh, terminology work life harmony. I actually like to go with work, non work life, uh, because a work life balance suggests that we have work and then we have life, but really work is part of our life. It's, it's part of the umbrella. So I, I, I like the terminology work, non work. Mm-hmm. Um, 
what I do with executives is um, I really break things down to bas basics for them. They're they're overcomplicating things in their life, um, and not, they're not being clear in their goals, their ambitions. You know, uh, when is enough enough type situation. Um, so I break it down to people's values. I work with them. I bring them down to their values and what means most of them in life. And what means most of you in life translates into your professional world one way or another. Uh, I know we hear a lot about corporate values, but where do you think those come from? They really stem from our personal values. And so I bring things back down to their personal values and then put, you know, really shed a spotlight into how they can manage their time more effectively um, in their days. You know, studies have shown that the human brain can do four to six hours of hard cognitive work a day. That's it. Mm -hmm. So why are we doing 12 to 14 hour days? Why are we out of the house 60 hours a week? We're not being productive. We're not being efficient. And so there really is enough time in a day to do the hard work, be ambitious, you know, be effective at work, hit your goals, but also leave time at home. And when you're home to be intentionally home and present. And I work with them on tricks on how to leave the office at the office, so to speak, even if you work from home. Um, there is, I, I work with them to create that, you know, light switch on off um, and give them tips and tricks that can really ground them and make them more present with their families. Yeah. What's interesting is, um, you know, I love this, uh, which brings up so many uh, memories back in the corporate world where it was just like, you know, it was just like for um, eight to five and it's just like kind of like, you're good for like the first four to six hours and then the rain remaining yeah. is just like just running on fumes and you're just wasting time you can be working on doing other more productive things and um so and then what do you how do you coach or what do you recommend for the individual like they're stuck like their jobs or careers are high high paying and but they've got a wife and kid and they've got a mortgage and car loans and you know, student loans and you know it's not really fulfilling them but it you know it, it allows them to you know travel and take vacations and provide for their family yeah so um i work on something called the wheel of life and the wheel of life what it does is it takes there's nine areas and in that you'll have i'm not going to go through all of them just here because <laughs> i might miss one but work and career is just one of nine you have health you have finances you have relationships hobbies um, and so we go through these, this holistic or comprehensive overview of the nine areas to see on a one to 10 scale, how satisfied are you with each area and think of it like a, if it's a wheel, think of it like a car, uh, the wheel on your car, right? If you're driving on a flat tire, you're not very efficient. You're not going very far. So the goal is to really try and round off our wheel as best as possible. You're never going to have tens across the board. Let's be realistic. Uh, but it's, it's creating a smooth ride for us and being more efficient and, the best way to do this is to practice self-care. So the one thing I work on with leaders, and they think it's counterintuitive, right? A leader is always trying to take care of their children, their wife, their spouse, uh, their partner, uh, their employees, their whatever it may be. They're always focusing on someone else, uh -huh. depleting their tank, flattening their tire. So what the first thing I absolutely do is I do this, this assessment with them, and we draw a picture of moment in time. And then focus on self-care because if you focus on your self-care if you get enough sleep if you eat right if you exercise if you do some mindfulness exercises uh, it doesn't have to be meditation there are many others out there uh, that you can do throughout your day you do these things that replenish your personal body budget your allostasis then you're able to show up more efficient for those other people and it sounds counterintuitive but think of the airplane analogy right you put the mask on yourself before you put it on somebody else there's a reason for that because if you don't take care of yourself how can you possibly show up best for other people? And so to create these efficiencies, to create these this this smooth life is really start with yourself. Start with your, and that's why I call it leadership wellness. We're calling it take care of your own wellness. And you'll be surprised by how quickly you're able to really uh, ma make that switch from on off, uh, from switching from home to work and so on and so forth. Yeah, I love that. You know, um, you know some things that, like sometimes I, quick 15 minute cat nap or, you know, kind of like a meditation or just like kind of like a walk um, or just and even like a mid day workout. Those are kind of or refresh you and so you can be more present. Um, talking about parents, because a lot of the audience, their parents and their leader, their mm -hmm. leaders in their family. So uh, what 
particular parenting skills have you found to be effective in a corporate setting and vice versa? Absolutely. Um, so I have two children of my own. So I, I kind of learned this the hard way, uh, learning from my own experiences. My kids uh, are currently eight and six. Uh, but when the pandemic hit, the pandemic was a turning point for me because um, it brought me home not only physically, but also emotionally, where my kids at that time were four and two. And um, what I learned while working from home and also being present with my family is you, when you're with them, you really need to create a disconnect between the two. There, you really need to draw a fine line. Uh, I can't recall how many times I was on a, on a work call and doing the finger to my daughters, saying one minute daddy's on the phone, daddy's on the phone. And I kind of caught myself saying, no, this is not how I want to be a parent. This is not how I want my kids to remember, you know, what work is like and what a profession is like and what but their dad was always busy doing something else. And so um, what I what I've done for myself is found ways to connect with my children that are meaningful for them, but are also creative that it keeps me engaged and, and allows me to change my mindset. So I can't just uh, trail off and and think about what's happening, you know, on a job site or at the office or what have you. So what I do is I create these really um, creative games where we can really bond and connect, but it causes me to immerse myself into their world as well a little bit. So there's a huge creative aspect, which is really fun. And we tend to lose our imagination as we grow up, but having kids, anyone who has kids knows it kind of brings you back a little bit and should really grab onto that because it is it is key in connecting with kids, especially at a young age, uh, is finding those areas that are going to be fun for both of you and create those those lasting memories. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And it, ultimately, it's all about, um, you know, the relationships and the experiences. And it's, you know, about your health and well-being and your family and your your spouse. And your, so um, the next question is talking about because a lot of you know leadership and is about empathy and communication. And um, how do you incorporate empathy and communications um, often honed through parenting into your approach to leadership and team management? Having kids made me a better communicator. Uh, <laughs> it, it really sh it changed the game for me. When you're speaking to your children, you tend to be a lot more patient, a lot more understanding because you understand that they don't know they don't know how the world works. They don't you're, they're learning everything through through your lens, through what you're explaining. And you grow uh, a level of compassion and empathy for your children because you love them so much, right? It's unconditional love. And I use that and I translate it to my work environment, you know. The thing within work that most people get caught up in is the pace. Things are so fast that they don't want to take the time to sit and listen, to explain things, or just listen actively without even providing your feedback, providing a solution. Let's literally just sit there and hear someone else's perspective and try to understand where they're coming from. Uh, really that empathetic side that you're talking about. And so what I did and what I recommend is slow things down. You don't always just need to give the answer and get off to the next project because we're so high strung on just being as productive as possible. Like I said, you got four to six hours of hard cognitive work a day. You got plenty of time to slow things down, be intentional with your team on how you want to communicate. And I did this in my construction company. Uh, my last two years there uh, where I was transitioning out as a two-year transition is I would sit with each member of my team for one hour a week and they got to choose the agenda. Yes, I had my own hidden topics that I wanted to, you know, get something out of them. But at the end of the day, whether it was personal, professional, I took time to listen. And that changed the game for a lot of things. It built stronger, positive relationships with my coworkers. It built trust. It built an understanding. Productivity went up. Morale went up. Um, it really just a matter of slowing things down, which, again, a lot of people in corporate America don't believe they need to. We got to go. We got to go. We're behind the eight ball. Um slow it down, take a breath, the same way you would with your kids. And I'm not saying I do that with my kids all the time. I'm a human being. Sometimes we got to get out of the house, get your shoes on, get in the car, we got to go. Uh, but when you can catch yourself and be more present and just really slow things down, that is where you can build that compassion. That's where you build that empathy. And that's where you're actually most effective. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, uh, I know we have around, you know, eight, nine minutes remaining. And so talk about, you know, you've worked um, 16 years climb the corporate ladder, you made a lot of people made personal sacrifices. And, you know, what describe that feeling that, you know, you achieve your goals and you have all the, you know, the six figure income and the, all the metrics, um, but not being fulfilled. 
talk about how to avoid that and, and what is the cause of that because that's that's a lot of you know i see that in um olympic athletes professional athletes doctors lawyers um and it just spirals like they you know they do drugs or they cheat on their spouse or they um you know uh just you know commit suicide or talk about what you learned yeah I, I, that's awesome chris uh you know, they're looking for that outlet. And you touched on it before. It's that difference between success and fulfillment. Oftentimes, people think that they're the same, but they're not. It, success is, for me, is is very external. It shows people the house, the car, uh, the, the accomplishments that you've made. Fulfillment is something you feel. It's something when you wake up in the morning and you feel energized, you feel that you're excited to go do what you're going to do. Those are really two different feelings and two different metrics. And so to your point, I had all the traditional metrics of success. I had the job security. I had freedom as an owner. I had uh, the salary and dividends and everything else to go with it. And I still wasn't waking up with that smile on my face. I was actually waking up with a bit of dread saying, oh, another hard day. It's kind of like Groundhog Day. Another day, another day. I've done this before. I've been doing it for years. And, and I didn't have to do it for 30 years to catch myself. Again, I, I, I kind of thank the pandemic for that because it was a bit of a smack in the face. It changed my routine. I don't know if I'd be where I am today talking to you if the pandemic never happened. But when I got home and I saw that I was missing all the small moments with my children. I was only seeing them on weekends for the most part because I was gone 50, 60 hours a week. So I was seeing them, if lucky, at night and on weekends. But it was when I saw them on a regular basis all the time and I was seeing all the awesome, cool things that energized me. That that was a different feeling for me. And I said, okay, hold on. There's something here because I have the success, but I'm lacking the fulfillment. And so it really, I needed to stop. I needed to slow things down. And so your question is, you know, what's my advice to someone who has those has the success, but still having that feeling that something's missing is really stop and think about what that fulfillment looks like for them. What are the things that give them energy? What are the things that give them joy? At the end of your working career, your career's done. <laughs> no one's going to remember that. What do you want to be remembered for? A lasting legacy. We have an exercise in coaching where we say, you know, try to visualize yourself on your deathbed, looking back at who you are today and what would they say to you? And then also look at your eight-year-old self and think about what they would think about what you're doing today, given all the dreams and, and you know, ambitions. You know, what did you, our imaginations were wild when we were kids. What do you want to be when you're older? And if you do that, that comparison and take a snapshot and really get a holistic um, feedback from yourself, reflective feedback on yourself of, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now? I think that's key. And some people may say yes, and that's power to them. But I think a lot of people are going to say no. A lot of people are going to say, I'm doing what's convenient for me right now. And uh, the studies show that the 70% in Canada and the US anyway, 70% of people are disengaged right now in their work. So they're quiet quitting or they're actively looking for another job. And I think that's very telling because it's not just about a paycheck. Life's too short. There's more to it. Yeah, yeah I love that. Yeah, it reminds me of a uh, of a very famous quote is like success without fulfillment is failure. Um and um mm -hmm. you know, uh, I really love how you describe that and you know, I I always talk to the um like the boomer and the silent generation to get wisdom and they always say uh don't work as hard because you know, that time can be more a uh, better spent with, you know, family and investing in others and uh you know, they wish they hadn't um you know, work so hard or so, you know, on, on such trivial things. So um, how can people uh, find out more about you, follow your social media, reach out to you for coaching, et cetera? Absolutely. So first off my website, landing page, www.boldmovescoaching.ca. On there, I have a whole contact me section. You can read about what kind of services I offer um, and uh, you can reach me through there or you can follow me on LinkedIn under Andrew Bollier. Um, I'm very present on LinkedIn so that we can always chat. There's no strings attached. I just like connecting with people and getting to know their stories. Uh, I'm on Instagram at, at bold underscore moves underscore coaching, which is also my handle for my Facebook profile for bold moves coaching. And I am also on YouTube at, at bold underscore moves underscore coaching, uh, where I post regularly every week. We're releasing new videos on tips and tricks on how to live a more fulfilling life, reduce stress, so on and so forth. So uh, definitely YouTube, great, great 
source of information and uh, inspiration. Yeah, I love that. And for all the audience, let's thank Andrew for coming on and um, what a fantastic discussion. Be sure to give his socials a like and follow and reach out to him. And thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Chris. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you.